Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. Even though Seaside Garage is a channel about mopeds and cars, this machine is the most popular thing I own, according to YouTube at least. And in this video I'm going to show you a little bit about how it actually works, or at least how I understand it works. I'm not going to go into all the math because I don't understand that very well, but I'm going to show you all the mechanical stuff that makes this Bicepart. I learned to say it right now. Bicepart machine. And it's really, really a simple thing, but so clever still. Um, I'm going to show you the inside of this machine. And then I'm actually going to try to do some tests just to make sure that it actually works. Uh, because I have never really done that. So far I have no problem. I'm using this machine quite a lot. If I got a wobbly tire, then I put it on this machine and then uh, it goes away. So it, it seems to work just fine for me, at least for my purpose. Let me show you this wonderful little machine. So the first thing this machine needs is a spinning tire because it's not only doing a static balancing, it's also doing a dynamic balancing and it needs to spin to, to be able to do that. This is what makes that happen. With a lever over here, I can swing this up and make it touch the tire. That's why it's black right here. It has been used a bit. That makes the, sp uh, the tire spin. With the lever on this side, I can make it spin one way and the other way. It's important to spin the tire in both directions to get the, uh, the correct point to set the weights. More on that later. But this is just a basic electric engine on a pivoting point. Nothing too fancy. Up here, is where the, the magic happens. It's very simple stuff really, but uh, it's very in, inspiring. Because what we have here is just a shaft. On this shaft, I can put these kinds of extensions on. Uh, they are meant to hold the tires. That goes on there. On the other end of the axle, we have this little contraption. This is just a piece of uh, lead or a uh, pencil. And when it's disengaged, the entire shaft and everything is fixed in place. But when I let go of that thing, it makes the shaft loose inside of there. Uh, maybe you can see it. I, it moves a little bit from side to side now, but when I undo this one, it moves a lot from side to side. And the way that happens is up in here. And to show you this, I'm just going to undo this. German manual thing, which is not only a manual, it's also a cover for the inside. I'm also going to remove this. So the first thing I want to show you is this. This is a completely normal bearing. Nothing too fancy there. There is the exact same bearing down here, and then there is a shaft going all the way up here that is connected to this one. That makes it possible for this shaft to do this motion by this bearing. Let me show you. So it just moves from side to side. I got a lot of comments on the previous video about this machine that it must have been, that it had to be a floating bearing or something like that, and that and the bearing and the bearing could be bad or stiff and therefore not make the machine work but it's way more simple than that it is just completely normal bearing there and there so this shaft can only move from side to side not up and down it's just from side to side and uh, because of math the drawing that it makes will indicate the position of the weights even though it's not being able to swing in those direction of the imbalance, but just from side to side. I can't explain, I cannot explain that because I'm not very good at math, but that's just how it works. And inside of here, let me show you. So if you look inside of here, one thing is that we got actual uh, oil points to oil the machine. That is just what I love about old stuff. Most new machines are <laughs> very hard to maintain because they are closed bearing stuff and uh, yeah i like this a lot better areas where i can lubricate it and i'm going to do that then we got some springs down there that holds everything in place and also a big spring there and uh, i gotta 
I imagine those springs need to have a certain tension for this system to work, right? But this is just how it is. But this is just how it works. Very basic stuff. The bearing makes it possible to swing from side to side. The spring makes it uh, damp is dampening that effect. And then the drawing right here will show us the uh, placement and the size of the weight needed. And then by using this piece of paper and finding the correct size of rim. I'm not going to do this today because we're not going to balance any wheels because I don't have any wheels that we can balance. Oh well, I do have them, but what I want to do in the next video with this machine is that I'm going to try to rebalance some wheels that just have just been balanced by professionals. I'm getting four wheels with uh, fresh new tires, which are freshly balanced in a week's time. Then I'm gonna test them on this machine. Hopefully it shows the same. If not, then maybe the machine is faulty or the professionals aren't that professional. We'll just have to see. But what I want to do in this video is to, to see what happens if I don't have a wheel on it and just spin it up. Because I am expecting it to just make a tiny dot in there and no imbalance. If it's showing an imbalance without a wheel on it, then something is wrong in the shaft or the bearings or... Yeah, I think you get the point. So that's what I'm going to try today. So I'm going to put the biggest adapter plate on it. So we have something to, uh, to spin up. Now we will not be able to use the electric engine for this because that is not able to reach the plate because there is, there's, there's meant to be a tire on there. So I'm gonna use my trusty skill drill with a rubber with a rubber thingy on the end. And then I'm gonna spin this one up using that, like this. But let me just stop it again because what I want to do now is that I want to remove that piece of paper and put a brand new piece of paper in. And then what I want to do is to spin this up, engage the pencil, then I expect a spot to be drawn right in the middle. If it starts to draw what I think is called a cardioid, a oval shape, then I know something is not in balance and then this machine won't be any good because if it's not in balance without a tire on it, then it's not going to be very efficient. But let's try. There we go. Let's engage the pencil. I see no shape being drawn. I am only seeing a small spot. But let's take a look at the spot that this machine has drawn. I'd say that's pretty good. It's just a tiny, tiny spot. What I want to do now is to attempt to make an imbalance and see if it, if it records it and see if it knows where the imbalance uh, is located. So what I'm going to attempt is to take this bolt and put it through right here. Okay, so now the machine is not going to tell me how heavy this is because as I showed you with the schematic thingy, it needs to correspond to the correct size wheel. But what I wanted to show is that there is an imbalance and then I wanted to point at this spot because this, because this is the opposite side of the imbalance balance and I expect the machines to tell me to put the same weight as this on this side. Uh, but let's try to see if it, if it picks it up and if it shows where, where the imbalance is. There we go. I'm gonna release it. It's not showing a lot. Ah, there we go. There we go, something is happening. Oh, a lot is happening. <laughs> All right. I'm just gonna let it spin until it stops. And then we're gonna spin it in the other direction because, because it needs to be spun in both directions as mentioned. And 
and there we go. Yep. <laughs> it's a lovely machine. <laughs> okay, so now we've got this drawing. And according to that, we need to put the weight right here. But it should be around here. Ah, but it's pretty close. So according to this, it wants me... It's, it's difficult to see, actually. But I need to find the heart shape kind of side of the, uh, of the uh, drawing. Like this. Richtung is the direction. And I'm getting that to be right there. That means that according to this, it wants me to put the weight right around here. That is surprising me a little bit because the weight is there. So according to my own logic, I would expect it to be up, up here and not here. But I just remembered something because I did get the manual translated and I'm and, and the manual states that you want to static balance this system or the wheel before doing the dynamic, dynamic balancing. The way you do that is that you take this and if it turns in a direction you will know that it's not balanced, then you will put a weight like up here for instance and then try to spin it again. And you will continue to do that until you got a completely free floating wheel that can stop at any position and it doesn't have a heavy side, then you can do the dy dynamic balancing. But by doing this experiment that I just thought of, it's not static balance before I started the test and therefore I don't think it's really usable, this test. But what I do know is that it's picking up an imbalance. And what I would like to do now is to see if I can find a bolt for in the same size. I should have found that before starting this attempt, but if I can find one at the same size, then I can try to put it where the machine thinks is the right placement, put it there and then see if the uh, balance is better at least. Okay, so a little bit stupid, I don't have a bolt of the same size, but I got two of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that bolt where the machine told me to do so, at least almost in the correct position because there, is not, there are not holes everywhere, but there is one there. And then I'm going to change the old one for a bolt in the same size as the one I just put in there. So we know it's the same weights. And then, uh, yeah, my logic could be off, but then I expect it to be back at a, at pretty much correct. Let's try. Firstly, let's change this piece of paper. And then let's spin it up. There we go. So by putting that bolt in the direction uh, or the placement that the machine told me to has left me with a spot of this size. And just to, uh, to show you where we were before, it is a massive improvement. Of course, you would want a small little dot in the middle if it was perfect. It is still telling me that we have a problem I'd say right around, actually still in the same placement as before. Um, a little bit, but a very little bit. I think that is going to be uh, within what is okay. I don't know what is the uh, limit on this machine. It's not telling me where to, what is acceptable, but of course just a little spot would be perfect. But this tells me that the machine at least is doing what it is supposed to, uh, but I can't really use this test for much too much because I'm not using it right. I'm not doing the static balancing before testing, but now I know that it's at least not making a, a cardio, cardioid back here without anything on it. So I know that the machine itself is in balance. Anyway, I just wanted to show you how this machine looked on the inside. And then I thought of this little test to test if the, if the machine even works. It's not the perfect test, but at least now I know that it's doing what it's supposed to. It's pointing in what seems to be the right direction. Um, it seems to be working just fine. What I want to do in the next video on this machine is I'm going, going to test the wheels that I get next week that has been professionally balanced. Then I'm going to see if they are in balance, all of them, when I get them. And then I would, and then I'm gonna try to remove the uh, the weights on, on one of them, and then see if the machine 
tells me to do the same as the uh, the professional did so if it's telling me to put the same amount of weight in the same placement then i'm happy with this machine for sure anyway thank you for watching and see you in the next one